I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? Well, to tell you the truth, in all this excitement, I've kind of lost track myself. But this being the 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world, and would blow your head clean off, you got to ask yourself, do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Wait, wait, wait. I got to know. Wait, 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 hold, hold, hold. Oh. Wait, I don't feel anything. Oh, yeah, um, it's just airsoft, so I'm just dry firing. The Smith & Wesson Model 29 is one of the most iconic handguns in modern history. First produced by Smith & Wesson in 1955, the Model 29 is a six-shot double-action revolver designed to fire the insane .44 Magnum cartridge, which made it the most powerful handgun in the world at the time. This naturally made it a hit amongst enthusiasts and filmmakers, leading it to its iconic status in movies like Dirty Harry and Taxi Driver. The Model 29 is hardly a common gun in airsoft, with only Tanaka having had plastic models of it previously. But not anymore. Hi, I'm Andrew, and in this video, I'll be reviewing the fully licensed Umarex Smith & Wesson Model 29 CO2 revolver made by Winggun. However, this review isn't just for one revolver, but for 10 whole different versions of the Model 29, ranging from the three inch the 6.5 inch, 8 inch, and the model 629, all in both black and silver. I'm going to be reviewing the 8 inch model because why the hell not? Look at it, it's huge. But as most of these differences are merely cosmetic aside from barrel length, this review should apply to all other model 29s regardless of which model you ultimately decide to purchase. So let's start off with the externals. First thing you notice is the hefty weight of the full metal body. It's not steel, but it certainly feels like it upon first impressions. The body is also polished to a near mirror finish. However, the grip though is made of plastic. Second though are the gorgeous, fully licensed Smith & Wesson trades, including an engraved logo on the side of the huge end frame, as well as on the barrel itself. At the front of this huge 8 inch barrel, we have the front sight post with a small red plastic piece at the tip to assist with sight alignment. Now the rear open sights, however, are adjustable in both elevation and windage through the use of a flathead screwdriver. On the top here, if you look really closely, is a small screw hole for a small hex key. Yes, unlike most wing gun revolvers, the Model 29 has an adjustable hop-up, which massively increases its accuracy potential to a degree not often seen on airsoft revolvers. On the left, however, we have the cylinder release. Now, unlike the real Model 29, the cylinder release of this airsoft version has a secondary function of being a safety. This can be engaged by pulling the release back instead of forward, and works whether the hammer is up or down and restricts the use of the trigger. Now, it's not very realistic, but at the same time, safety is its own virtue, so take it as you may. On to the ammunition. The Umarex Model 29 uses metal-tipped wing gun airsoft revolver shells, but, however, is also compatible with the plastic-tipped revolver shells, like this one from the Webley. However, it is important to note that power output may vary depending on the shell, so do keep that in mind if you have other shells to use it with. Now, the Model 29 cylinder is unsurprisingly absolutely huge, especially compared to other revolvers. However, we have noticed that the ejector often bypasses the rounds when being pushed, leading them to get stuck inside the cylinder, where you'll then have to like take ages to jiggle them free. So I do recommend that if you are reloading to just tilt the revolver and let the rounds fall out into your hand instead of using the push ejector. Onto the hammer and trigger. Now, like most revolvers, the M29 can be fired in both single action and double action. 
Now in single action, the trigger is a bit heavy, but has next to no mush before releasing the action, which is great for precise shooting. In double action, however, <laughs> I almost guarantee your trigger finger will double in size from the workout this gun gives from having to pull this gigantic cylinder. So keep that in mind. Like all wing gun revolvers, the M29 is CO2 powered and uses standard 12 gram CO2 capsules. Now to access the chamber, just lift the grip right over here to expose the chamber. Place the CO2 capsule in the space over here and use a large hex key to, on the bottom to screw it in. This should last you a gigantic number of rounds. We stopped actually counting after 50 shots. So the revolver should last you most of the day. So the Umarex M29 looks and feels utterly gorgeous and comes with an adjustable hop up. But how does it shoot? Let's head to the range and find out. And now for the chrono. We're firing 0.2 gram BBs using CO2. All right, let's do this and... And now for the accuracy test. Here I am in the Red Wolf warehouse, shooting at a target just 15 meters away, firing 0.2 gram BBs. Now, I'll also be firing this in single action because obviously it's far more accurate, but it's gonna take a bit longer. Anyway, without further ado, let's get going, shall we? Now, obviously that was only six rounds. So what do you have to do? I have to reload. So just pop this out. Now, one issue that we've noticed is that if you use the ejector, it doesn't necessarily work because it slips right through. So I'll have to tilt this just normally, that's fine. And then reload the final four rounds. And there we go. So. Range is hot, let's finish this off. Overall, firing it, is an absolute dream. Really nice, really crisp. Obviously I had to do it single action because the trigger pull of the double action is an absolute nightmare, which should be the case because of the size of this cylinder. Accuracy wise, I'm, I'm not so sure. If you looked at the, was it, the chrono test, the consistency isn't that very good being a CO2 gun which is a bit unusual when you usually think that CO2 should be consistent. So I'm not 100% sure I actually got all those rounds on target, but it's gonna be interesting nevertheless. Even then though, it is like carrying it, feels like you're carrying a work of art. You know, crisp lines, great trades, just the mirror finish. I, I actually quite like it. Not sure if I can use this in the game though. Anyway, let's go take a look, shall we? All right, all right, let's see, let's see, let's see over here. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So only six out of 10. Uh, just quick. So yeah, 
only six out of ten. Uh, like I said, the chrono did note that it wasn't that consistent. So this is obviously the result. Um, even then, that's still a 60% accuracy rate, according to the method we chose. So it is probably actually quite a bit better than most airsoft revolvers you get, especially the ones with a fixed or non-existent hop-up. Overall, it's not really that skirmishable, I'll be completely honest, but hey, revolvers aren't supposed to be skirmishable unless they're being used against other revolvers. Even then though, as a novelty item, I still quite like it simply because it's a huge 44 Magnum, so I can't complain that much. Anyway, that's all we have right now. Let's head back to the studio, shall we? And we're back! So, the Umrex Smith & Wesson M29 looks and feels like an absolute beast and shoots pretty well thanks to its adjustable hop-up. So let's rank the thing. For fun factor, we give the M29 a 4 out of 5 stars. It's one of the biggest and heaviest metal airsoft revolvers out there and is frankly a joy to shoot. Trigger pull though is utterly insane and there's no way to know whether you're out of ammo until you start dry firing. So do keep that in mind. Realism though is a 3.5 out of 5. Now while the Umrex M29 does get plenty of points for being a metal revolver, especially when most airsoft revolvers are plastic, it does have a physical safety when the real one doesn't. Some of the markings though, like this one that says license trademarks here, are not present on the real pistol either. And the plastic grip over here does keep it from getting top marks. On performance, we give this a four stars out of five. This M29 is far more accurate than most other airsoft revolvers thanks to its adjustable hop-up. However, the power is quite lacking due to these particular shells. Build quality gets another 4 out of 5 stars. As mentioned previously, this is one of the first full metal 44 Magnum M29s on the market and frankly is a beast to hold. The only thing preventing this gun from getting an outright 5 is that one, it's not full steel and frankly the worksmanship and the quality of the plastic hand grip just could be a lot better, frankly. On value, however, we give the M29 4.5 stars out of 5. With the snub nose variant costing just $160, Umarex's take on this legendary revolver offers incredible value for such a huge pistol. Collectability wise, we give the M29 another 4 stars out of 5. On the field, you will absolutely stand out from the crowd, especially if using this gigantic 8-inch version. And even if you don't, it makes for an absolutely fantastic wall hanger for this legendary gun. Overall, we give the Umarex Smith & Wesson Model 29 an impressive 4 stars out of 5. It's certainly not the first Model 29 out there, but it absolutely is the best so far with the addition of an adjustable hop-up being a very welcome inclusion. So let's hand it over to you guys. What are your thoughts on the Umarex Smith & Wesson Model 29? Let us know in the comments section below. And for these cool products and many more, visit us at www.redwolfairsoft.com. This is Andrew, callsign Flood, out.